Hi, this is Irene, one of the Emergency Ultrasound Fellows from MGH. This is a short tutorial on how to grade hydronephrosis on bedside ultrasound. So a little bit of anatomy to start. The kidney is encased by the gerodus fascia here. And let's, let's take a longitudinal cross-section of this. What I've highlighted in orange here is the renal parenchyma, which consists of the renal cortex, shown in purple, and a number of medullary pyramids, shown in red. And here's what it looks like on ultrasound. What you can see here is the hyperechoic uh, border of the kidney. And the cortex is generally, but not always, less echogenic than the liver or the spleen. So just pausing the kidney here, uh, the, the video here for a second. So here's the cortex. And in this clip, we can see four hypoechoic medullary pyramids shown there. And depending on how your cross-section is angulated, you may or may not see all the pyramids along the cortical medullary junction. So let's go back to the cross-section of the kidney again. Aside from the renal parenchyma, what's shown in green here is the renal sinus, and the hilum, which consists of the renal vessels and the ureter, passes into the renal sinus on the medial aspect of the kidney. The collecting system uh, is shown with the minor calyces here shown in blue, and the major calyces shown in orange. These calyces are usually not seen on ultrasound in a normal kidney that doesn't have dilated systems. Instead, what we do see is the hyperechoic renal sinus fat right in the middle. You usually don't see the calyces, and putting this picture all together, what you see here is a normal kidney on bedside ultrasound with the cortex and the red um, medullary pyramids and the renal sinus fat in green. For detecting hydronephrosis, ultrasound is actually pretty good with a reported sensitivity of 90% and a specificity as high as 98%. The most common grading system used is the Society for Fetal Urology Grading System. This was developed for fetal ultrasound, but is actually pretty commonly applied to grading postnatal, pediatric, and adult hydronephrosis. The grading system goes from 1 to 4. And just so that you are aware, there are other grading systems out there as well. The European Society of Uroradiology and the European Society of Pediatric Radiology jointly uh, came up with a grading system that grades hydronephrosis from 0 to 5, but the main message is relatively similar. For this tutorial, we'll be applying the Society for Fetal Urology grading system. So how does it look? Um, on grade 1, what you, what you see here is that the anechoic uh, urine barely splits open the uh, renal sinus. You can see that right in the middle, right there, the hypoechoic uh, or anechoic area. In grade 2, you can see some, but not all the major calyces, you see the renal pelvis there. So here's what uh, grade 2 might look like. And as you can see, the renal sinus is readily seen, and you can also see a few major calyces dilated as well. In grade 3, virtually all the major as well as the minor calyces are dilated, and the renal parenchyma right here is actually relatively preserved. And here's what a clip of that would look like. So what you see are the dilated uh, minor calyces in blue, draining into the dilated major calyces in orange. And as you can see, the parenchyma is preserved. And lastly, in grade 4, you get this bare claw appearance, like so. And then the renal cortex is relatively thinned out. So here's what uh, grade 4 would look like. You can see the, uh, the bare claw appearance there in a very thinned out cortex. So this is what they all look like grading, uh, going from grade 1 to 4. Lastly, there are some false positives to watch out for. Um, be careful not to be fooled by renal cysts. And you can see on this clip the renal cysts coming into view right there. And here's another one coming into view right there. An anechoic region that's round and it has a distal acoustic uh, posterior enhancement. Renal cysts are incidental findings in almost 50% of the population, so it's not uncommon for, your, for us to see them. The key thing to look for is that the renal cysts aren't communicating with the pelvis. Um, in addition, they're generally peripheral in uh, location, as both of these are on these clips here. 
but sometimes it can be found in the renal sinus as well. Such as in this case, you can see the renal cyst popping into view in the renal sinus. And again, what you're really looking for is that it does not communicate with the collecting system. Um, and here it doesn't, and that's why what we're looking at is a renal cyst and not hydronephrosis. Second, you really should throw Doppler on. True hydronephrosis is not expected to light up. So seeing this clip is a lot more reassuring that what we're looking at is hydronephrosis and not renal vessels. And that's what this would look like. So if you have a hypoechoic area and you put um, Doppler on, in this still image, you can see that the uh, renal vessels are lighting up. So this is not hydronephrosis. A uh, third potential uh, false positive to look for, out for is the extra renal pelvis. Um, it's a normal variant found in about 10% of the population. So here the pelvis, the renal pelvis, is uh, located outside the renal hilum. But as you can see, there are no dilated calyces. You can see maybe a, a couple of medullary uh, pyramids there, but the, the calyces, there are no dilated calyces in these two uh, still images. Um, if you're unsure, it would be helpful to uh, compare previous imaging if you have those. So in summary, here are the four grades of hydronephrosis. Be aware of the potential false positive, especially cysts and uh, renal vessels. In the case of renal vessels, applying color Doppler should be able to help you sort that out. And thanks for watching. Keep checking back on our website for more tutorials and cases.